Have you ever wondered how you can be better at gratitude? That's what we'll talk about today. It is only with gratitude that life becomes rich. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Today we're going to talk about how to go deeper with gratitude. I often shake my head a little bit when I read articles or listen to podcasts about gratitude because somehow we made gratitude all about us. Gratitude is about being thankful to God, being thankful to other people. Yet when I read articles about it, we're talking about how it's going to improve us. It's going to improve our happiness. It's going to make us more thankful. It's going to make us more thankful. It's going to make us more connected to things around us. And that's absolutely true. But somehow, a side effect became the main point of it. When I read a few articles about how to become more thankful, it talked about, well, you have to be thankful for what? Pick the right thing you're thankful for. Okay. Then you have to have the right emotion. It should overwhelm you with emotion and fill up all your senses and take over your being that you are so thankful for all the things. It should bring you to the point of feeling empathy for other people. And then it'll give you resilience to fight against bad times so that we still feel all the good thoughts, even when we're going through something horrible. It's confusing to me because gratitude is about being grateful for solid things. First of all, I think it's weird because it should be something that comes from us. We should be grateful for the things that we have, grateful to other people for the things they do for us, and grateful to God. In a sense, it feels like it almost should be natural. We teach kids all the time. Remember, thank grandma for the gift. Remember, go thank your uncle because he fixed your toy. And we have to teach kids. They're young. They don't know what they're doing. But by the time we're adults, shouldn't we understand honest thankfulness? That when we're grateful for other people spending their time helping us, should it come right from the soul? And that the fact we have to educate ourselves in order to be more thankful is a bit mysterious to me. But I also think that thankfulness is, first of all, a little bit weird when we don't know who we're thankful to. It's really easy when we're thankful to our parents or we're thankful for other people. But when people say, I'm really thankful for what a beautiful day it is today, I think, to who? Who are you thankful to? And sometimes you'll get this answer, the universe. I'm thankful to the universe. And people profess to not have faith in anything. They profess that religion is old, that God is a concept they no longer believe in. And yet what I find is they almost have this religious worship of the universe. I'm thankful to the universe for making such a beautiful day. What a weird thing to thank. A universe following the laws of physics is no more caring for us than the rock that is sitting outside my house. And yet people are thankful to it. To me, a real thankfulness has to do with, first of all, being God-centered that we are thankful for all the things that God is and all the things that God does for us, whether we want those things or not. We also are thankful because it truly allows us that pure appreciation. And when we are thankful truly to the people around us, but most importantly to God, it does make us generous. It does encourage us and it does give us resilience in the tough time like we talked about before. And looking at a bit around it, I first of all, you know, there's some very famous passages when it comes to thankfulness in the sense that we have 1 Thessalonians 5.12. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. In all circumstances. And that always brings up an interesting question. Do I thank God for the tough times I have? Do I thank God if I lost a job or had a health issue? Am I supposed to be thankful for God with that? And it's not that you're going to be thankful for the bad things happening, or you're not going to be thankful for having health issues. But what you're going to do is you're going to be thankful for God's purpose on earth, 
If there's a lot of bad evil going on around us, we can be thankful for the situation because we know one that God loves us. He always loves us, that God saved us, that God will give us that eternal home that will make this part seem very small. We know that God can change bad into good. And we also know what Max Lucado says all the time, that no matter what, God is sitting on his throne. So it's a very important step to know that you can be thankful in every situation, but you're not thanking God for the evil things in the world, but you're thanking God for what brought you to this point to give you the strength to get through it, what he's going to do to help you bring yourself out of it, and the eternal home that you're going to get that will make all the tears wipe away. And looking at some of this, I found a Bible study from Rick Warren, and he has a whole bunch of different worships that were podcast and also worship guides about thankfulness. And he also challenges us to go what he calls this higher level of thanksgiving, meaning that it's beyond just thanking God when we get something. Again, God's not a vending machine. He loves us. And it we just thank God for the money we got or thank God for the security we got. He says, quote, do they love me or do they love the money if a kid thanks you for a gift? What we really need to know is that we really do love God and to thank God in a way that shows we love him and to love God in a way that is not about the stuff he gets us, not about the times that he rescued us from this or that, but thank God, Rick Warren says, for who he is. Thank God for all the hands that he places in the world, for the creation of the world, for his hand on you, for the way that you were born, and for the gifts that you were given, but also the world that he made around us. We love God because of the things we got, but we love God because of who he is. And even when we don't understand what's going on, we love God for putting his will out into the world. He also says that we should have what we call appreciation, which we tend to think in line with thankfulness. But he points out that when we depreciate something, it means it goes down in value. When we appreciate something, it means it increases in value. And so when we go with appreciation for other people and thank them for the things that they've done or thank them for just being them, we are making their value higher. So there is a ministry, he says, in bolstering other people and making them feel more because of the appreciation we show them. So that's the second level of thanksgiving. Thank God for who he is. We thank other people for what they are and what they do to make this world, to make our lives better. We even see it in a lot of hymns, How Great Thou Art by Stuart K. Hine. O Lord my God, when I, in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. It's beyond even just the things that go on in our lives, but it's about the creation of the universe and how God's hand is in every step of what happens not just to us, but what happens in the universe. It's a gratefulness that goes on about it. Then the next point to consider is that we thank God at the point when we're asking for something, regardless of what outcome it has. It's a huge step of faith for us to thank God at the point of asking for something. And it makes me think of if a person was to ask their husband, hey, could you clean out the garage? Thank you and mean it for the true appreciation it is before the person even did it. Isn't that funny? Our brain thinks, well, I think I want to look at the garage before I thank the person for doing it. And it drags us into a bigger step when we can thank before a thing was done. And when we ask God for something, we can thank God at that point because we already know that he works to our benefit. He's working on miracles. And we can thank God for what's going to happen next. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, Don't be anxious about anything, 
but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That means that at that point when we are presenting our request to God, we are giving thanks at that point, even before we see how it turns out. Step up your thanksgiving. Not just look at God as a vending machine. Not just be thankful to God for the things he gives you. And not just be thankful to other people for the things they do for you. Appreciate people even before they do things. Appreciate God at the time of request. And not fight this weird battle of trying to have the right emotion, the right empathy, and think about the what of what we're going to do it. But instead, make our gratitude God-centered. So my challenge to you, write down three things that you appreciate about God for who he is. It's not something you've been given, but some characteristic you appreciate more than anything. And maybe you never told him how much you appreciate it. Then give your thanks to God for those three items. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and a wonderful time with God, with your family, in true gratefulness for the things that we have, the things that we will experience, and for the fact that God is on his throne. And just remember that you can have true gratefulness by taking small steps. 